ancient Greece, Rome, China, and more. What are all these ancient civilizations known for? No, not their contribution to philosophy, nor government, or ultimate importance to our modern era, but the fact that they didn't find dinosaurs. Or did they? Actually, now that I think about it, maybe it's not something that the ancient world is known for, but it's something that I think you have to wonder about. I mean, throughout the last few centuries, humanity has been discovering dinosaurs left, right, and center. But surely, the ancient world would have discovered something, right? A bone here and there? Come on, throw me a bone at least. They must have found something through over a millennia of existence. And that's what I'll be discussing today. G'day ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, back at it with another video. Today we'll discover if and how ancient civilizations may have discovered and interpreted dinosaur findings, as well as fossil findings as a whole. Now remember, a lot of this is speculative, where I'm providing possible explanations. First, we need to establish when the ancient period was, and it was about between 3000 BCE to 500 CE. So yeah, pretty simple stuff. So now we can go on to our main focus. The three places we'll be focusing on specifically will be Greece, China, and Rome. Kicking it off with Greece. Ancient Greece, in my opinion, shows some pretty strong coincidences for them not to have discovered some type of fossils throughout their existence. Exhibit A, we have the Cretan Dwarf Mammoths. I feel like it should be quite obvious what I'm getting at here. If we just take a cheeky gander at this mammoth skull, it resembles a creature from Greek mythology, a quite large and imposing one at that, one with a singular large eye in the middle of their head. That's right, the Cyclops. Possibly contributing to the foundation of the Cyclops myth, the skulls of advanced proboscideans, including mammoths, elephants, and mastodons, featured an enlarged nasal cavity where the trunk extended from, with eyes positioned on each side. However, if we have the expectations of frontal eye placement, I feel it might lead one to perceive these skulls to belonging to a singular eyed creature, inspiring the tales of a one eyed monster roaming the ancient lands of Greece. Personally, I do feel like this is the smallest leap one could take, as yeah, if you put an image of what a cyclops looks like compared to that of a mammoth skull, tell me that people in 700 BCE wouldn't think of tales of a giant one-eyed creature. Moving on to exhibit B, there's also been some promising evidence for another mythological creature within Greece, this being the griffin. This whole trend of people taking fossils and turning them into mythological creatures is going to be ongoing, so just remember that. Adrian Mare, a historian of ancient science, wrote that many similarities are seen between the Protoceratops and the Griffin, indicating that fossils may have influenced descriptions of this mythic creature. These similarities include a beak, four legs, elongated shoulder blades, which may have been interpreted as wings, and also broken off frills, which would have been turned into stumps, which again could have been interpreted as ears. Although I do think it's a possibility, British paleontologist and author Mark P. Whitton writes that it's unlikely for the following reasons. Read that? Alright cool, let's move on to Exhibit C. Fossils were Greek heroes. I'll admit this one is far more speculative. There is also the possibility that Greek heroes larger than life presentation was based on the discovery of large fossils. Again, Adrian Mare states this could have occurred. For instance, upon the discovery of a collection of enormous bones near Sigeon in Asia Minor, locals attributed them to the legendary Homeric hero Ajax, known for his remarkable stature. Notably, the kneecaps were found 6 inches across, hinting at the potential origin to be from a mastodon. Greek traveller Pausanias documented several instances of such discoveries in various regions, which we'll get more into when we move into Rome. But first, let us travel the Silk Road to ancient China to check out what evidence they have for interacting with fossils. 400 BCE Chinese historian Chang Qu report brings us to Exhibit D, the Dragon Bone Sites, which involves the discovery of massive dragon bones. Dragon bones, huh? You know what also has a similar shape as dragon bones? That's right, fossils of dinosaurs. Well, that's what you'd think on paper. In reality, there's not too much evidence of a relationship between these dragon bones and dinosaur fossils. This is supported as in both the 9th and early 20th centuries, Western explorers sought fossils in China, particularly dragon bones believed to have medicinal properties. These fossils were sourced from various locations, such as riverside caves in the Yuan province and sinkholes in the Sichuan province, where Pleistocene mammals were often abundant. 
The dragon bone industry involved local farmers excavating fossils from soft mud and treating them roughly due to their pharmaceutical use. Despite excellent documentation of these dragon bone sites, no substantiated link between them and dinosaur fossils have been found. The fossils associated with dragons were primarily extinct mammals, which included horses, giraffes, elephants, rhinos, hyenas, etc., which were discovered through traditional geological prospecting rather than dragon bone trade. The evidence suggests that Chinese dragons were linked to real, albeit extinct, mammals, not dinosaurs. Now, this may sound a bit boring, but it was through these dragon bone sites that we discovered everyone's favorite giant ape the Gigantopithecus. There's at least that. But again, this just goes to show that although not dinosaurs, ancient civilizations like China discovered a number of extinct species and interpreted them in their own ways. But now let us travel back through Europe, specifically through Rome. Did they have any discoveries throughout their rule? Well, it seems that Roman emperors and those that were just in power were quite interested in collecting these fossils, again, often attributing them to mythological creatures, but they collected them nonetheless. For example, Emperor Augustus was an avid collector. According to ancient historian Suetonius, Augustus collected the skeletons of thought to be giant's bones, weapons of heroes, and bones of giant aquatic and terrestrial creatures. This brings us to Exhibit E, where a tusk was collected that was thought to be from the Caledonian boar from Greek mythology. Ancient Greek geographer Pausanias reports, The remaining one is kept in the gardens of the emperor, in a sanctuary of Dionysus, and is about half a fathom long. For those of you that don't know the very common use of the fathom measurement, it's about a metre long. Going back to our classic historian Adrian Mare, she suggests that the tusks could have been from a mammoth. Furthermore, Pliny the Elder noted that in Rome, in the Adel ship of Marcus Scarus in 58 BCE, the bones of a sea monster were displayed. These included ribs and spines, which were said to have exceeded that of an Asian elephant. I feel like we can tell that Rome was fairly inspired by Greek mythology, but they were far more interested in collecting these items of antiquity. It's evident both emperors and wealthy men alike were interested in collecting these thought to be monsters and put them up for display. Just before I end off, I think it's important to summarize what we went through. I feel like despite being speculative from both the fossils discovered and accounts written at the time, I think that there is evidence that ancient civilizations would have discovered fossils of extinct creatures. Whether many, if any, were dinosaur fossils could definitely be debated. I still think those that were found impacted the culture and mythologies of these civilizations at the time. And although I covered just three main ancient civilizations, there is still a number of which may have discovered fossils, and many that intertwined with each other are like Greece and Rome. This includes places like India, where Alexander the Great was said to have encountered dragons, and even Adrian Mead notes that natives of North America may have even discovered fossils as well which is all definitely interesting. So if you want me to cover that in the future, then comment below. So we've reached the end of the video. As always, I hope you enjoyed. It is always interesting to think and speculate about what our ancient ancestors must have thought and interpreted when potentially discovering fossils of extinct species. Don't forget to like and subscribe, as well as checking out my TikTok and Instagram for shorter form content. I'll catch you all next time. See ya.